The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and... Welcome to this learning session. I am Tantra Divine, an information and communication technology teacher, and we are in Lower Safe. From your previous lesson, that's lesson 10, uh, we were supposed to, we were given an assignment to carry out before this lesson in which we are now. And the assignment required that you should identify any three advantages of using social media tools. And if you actually carry out your assignment correctly, then your response might have included the following. So, uh, social media tools help to increase visibility of customers online. So you see through your social media tools, uh, you could, you know, there are tools that permit you to see customers that are online, the number and maybe where they are found online. You can also have tools which help you to know what others are saying about your product or about your brand online. So that can help you to better take decisions. Uh, and thirdly, uh, social media tools help to promote your brand name or reputation online. So there are platforms that help you to get your product known by those who visit uh, different websites or maybe social media platforms online. A lesson uh, we are going to look at is titled Implementing Social Media Functionalities and is the first lesson in the series uh, of Implementing Social Media Functionalities. Of course, it's the 11th lesson on the social media. And uh, it's going to be laid out as follows. We are going to look at the objectives Secondly, we'll look at what you are supposed to know before uh, in order to effectively comprehend this lesson. We're then going to look at a real-life application whose uh, solution is going to help us better comprehend the lesson. Now we're going to move on to uh, some knowledge or concepts that will help us to resolve the above real-life application and after which we are going to look at some exercise um, and we will end up with an assignment which you are supposed to carry out before the next lesson. By the end of this lesson, you will be able to or you should be able to implement the identity functionality on a social media platform as well as you uh, being able to implement most of the used functionalities of such a selected platform. Before we get into the lesson, it's important for you to recall the concepts which we saw when we studied, uh, when we looked at the introduction to social media and the impacts of social media, as well as what we saw when we studied classification of social media and also the various social media uh, functionality and landscape. So it's important for us to go through that. Uh, it's good when you want to go through that, it will help us to comprehend or better comprehend the lesson we are looking at. Now consider the following real life application. It's a situation in which a firm decides to engage social media platforms for sharing updates with their customers on their products. But then, what they want is to focus on making their identity or product or brand identity known to 
the, uh, the, the visitors of their site. And in such a situation, you have been asked to carry out the following. So your services have been solicited to use the identity functionality of the holy structure which we have seen in previous lessons. Uh, you want to use that identity functionality of the holy structure in implementing identification on a social media platform, selected social media platform, and after which you're going to implement other functionalities which are mostly used on such a selected social media platform. Uh, just before we uh, proceed with our lesson, I want you to recall that we are currently, all of what the lessons we are looking at is under the module social media. And recall that the social media module is tailored, or in this case, is taught in such a way as to encourage either individuals or business uh, or companies to, uh, to, to, to involve or to engage social media in helping to promote their businesses. And so what we are looking at here is how each of the social media functionalities we saw before is used in a particular uh, online application or social on a, through, or through a social media platform to achieve the above object, objective I just stated. So, uh, what is the identity functionality? Recall that the identity functionality is the first and central block of the honeycomb structure, and it's a, it is about it talks about the extent to which information regarding a user is part of a social media uh, platform. Right, so you see, uh, in the identity uh, functionality, focus is made on getting information about who the user of the platform is. And that information includes things like your surname, your address, your contact, and so on and so forth. Two applications are repeated for making use or really uh, requiring that the user enters much information about his or herself and such uh, uh, examples of such applications are Facebook and uh, LinkedIn. Just as a review, recall that from the honeycomb structure of social media functionality, we saw that there are seven blocks that could be identified from the structure. We had the identity block, the presence block, the relationships block, reputation, groups, uh, comments, and sharing. However, the identity component has to be read as uh, the degree in which the user's profile is central for the social network activity. So, of course, that means uh, there, may, uh, there are different issues that could arise like data privacy, the use of your real names versus nicknames, uh, which depend on what you just entered. So we start looking at concepts like data privacy and so on when we are dealing with the identity functionality. Let us look at a, a very good example of an online application or a social media platform which clearly demonstrates how the identity functionality is used or can be exploited and used by companies or individuals to promote their brand their, uh, or their products. So, uh, LinkedIn is actually an online platform that is used primarily for professional networking and career development. Well, it allows job seekers also to post their curriculum details and employers to post jobs. So you can actually get a job through uh, LinkedIn as well as see jobs that are uh, advertised through that platform. Okay, of course, it is the world's largest professional networking site. And to visit that site, you need to type in the link www.linkedin into your address.com into your address bar. So members actually use that platform to keep in touch with business associates, clients, and also co-workers. So we're going to be looking at how the identity 
uh, functionality is implemented through the LinkedIn social media platform. What you see on your screen is the honeycomb structure for LinkedIn. And if you look at it carefully, you notice that emphasis is placed on the identity functionality. It's more gray out than other functionalities. But then there's a second category of, uh, of uh, coloring, which is found on the relationships and the reputation uh, blocks. That's to tell you that LinkedIn focuses most on identity, followed by relationships and reputation. This is not to say that it doesn't focus on maybe sharing and so on, but it, is, it focuses on them to a lesser extent. Okay? So we're going to be looking at the ones on which LinkedIn focuses the most. So, identity on LinkedIn uh, is implemented by requiring that a user enters uh, some information about his or herself. And your profile is a very powerful part of your brand. So, on LinkedIn, it is required that all users uh, be able to see what you put as your profile information, except that you actually set your profile, uh, maybe to, to you set the, the set, you put the settings to private mode so that others will not be able to see. But everybody who has a LinkedIn account can view that. Of course, also, those who Google up your, your name may be able to see a bit about your LinkedIn profile. So from the link that we shared, once you type that link into your browser, you will have, and you maybe you're, it's just your first time of creating uh, an application. I just want to say that, please, this lesson is more of a practical lesson. So it is very important that you type in the link into your browser of the browser of the computer. Maybe you're using a computer or a smartphone, or you can download the LinkedIn app on your smartphone and follow along with us. And if you notice that maybe we are a bit faster than your uh, the way you walk, you can pause the video for some time, and so that you can be able to walk in line or in time in a timing. Uh, in timing with us. So once you actually create your account, the interface for your account should look like what you see on your screen. It requires that you enter, uh, if you already have a password and a username, you enter, but if not, you can create a new account using either your Google uh, information or maybe some other application like Facebook. So if you actually create your account, what we refer to as the profile will look as a bit like what you find on the screen. This is the profile for Tantra Divine on LinkedIn. And there you will find information about uh, who Tantra Divine is, his education, those who are connected to him, and so on and so forth. So you can also find where you may decide to remove somebody who is following you or who is connected to you or accept a request of somebody who wants to connect with you. Now recall that why we are going through this is because as a company or an individual who wants to engage people on social media and you are focusing on identity, you are supposed to know how or what an identity block looks like or how you can implement it through a social media platform. So what we are seeing on LinkedIn, you could also implement it on any other social media platform. So after seeing the image that we just saw before, you are supposed to complete your profile by making sure that you add a good quality photo of yourself. Recall that you see on that profile, there is the image of Tantra Divine and also a certain background image. Now, if you want to get uh, many more persons visiting your site, it's important that you get this area looking good or beautiful. So, you're supposed to also make sure that your profile sparkles by adding a background image or what we call a banner or cover image. Now, 
where you find um, you, you're supposed to mention your industry and its location in the headline. Uh, LinkedIn provides up to 120 characters for you to do that. Okay, so other things that you'll find uh, on that platform include your uh, experience, your work experience. So you can add a, your work experience by clicking on this link. You notice there is a plus sign there. Once you click on add experience, it gives you a box in which you type that information. So currently, if you look at Tantra Divine's uh, experience, you find out that maybe he's the, he's the CEO of Orion Digital Group. He's been teaching with the Ministry of Secondary Education from September 2014 and so on and so forth. So you can add more so that those who visit your profile can get to know more about you and will know how to connect with you. So you can also um, add your educational profile, this where you schooled, uh, the year, uh, I mean, with, uh, within which that education was carried out, and so on and so forth. So, more information that you can find on the profile includes your uh, volunteer experience. So, you can tap here to add information about your volunteer experience. Take note that many companies that employ often require that you must have worked for some time or offer some free services or voluntary services with some uh, company organizations. It helps you to get your job faster. So you put that information there. And you also record your skills. You can select the skills uh, that you currently uh, retain or possess. So you can add your skills there. You have a selection of skills. Uh, you can work with Microsoft Office, customer service, public speaking, and so on and so forth. All right, more, remember we are looking at the identity block and how it is implemented on LinkedIn. So LinkedIn requires also that you add your volunteering uh, services just like we saw. And you can add your skills, we already saw that. And then you can ask you know, uh, people to recommend you Remember that it's a platform, it's a professional platform that helps people to be able to, uh, you know, look for jobs, offer jobs, or connect with others who are of their profession or career in order to help them improve on whatever abilities they possess. So here, you can add recommendations. You can ask your friends or your connections to add recommendations about you so that if somebody is picking you for a job, he can just check your uh, recommendation profile and we'll be able to see what others are saying about you, okay? Of course, and you can also see your accomplishments, what you've been able to accomplish so far, and then you have your contact address and so on put there. So just uh, to re-emphasize on what we already said, you are to include a concise summary of who you are, what you do, and what you have to offer. So that information, uh, LinkedIn provides up to about 2,000 characters for you to describe yourself in that area. You can also add your current position and what it involves. So if you are maybe a manager of your company, what does it involve? What do you do as a manager? It takes just 2,000 characters. By characters here, we are referring to uh, letters. So maybe letters or numbers or digits. They all form part of characters. Now you can also add your previous work experience or history and education and other details just like we saw. Okay. Now, you can give some summary about yourself, maybe about your personality. So, that summary appears under about, the about option. And you can give some, maybe you attach some external documents, photos or links that support some work you have been doing, maybe researches you've been carrying out, posts that you've been putting up, you can attach that here so that those who visit your profile can see more of who you are and what you've been doing. Okay, now this is some information which is private to you. There you can see who viewed your profile. So you can see the people who viewed your profile. Uh, you may just be happy to discover that Bill Gates actually looked at your profile. Okay, 
Now, uh, you have other activities, like you can find the number of people who are following you, that information is recorded there. And like you initially said, your work experience has a place for it being recorded too. Having looked at how uh, identity is implemented on the social, on the, on the LinkedIn platform, the next pla uh, block which we saw is the relationships block. And actually, LinkedIn enables you to network with people and professional organizations in your industry. So you see, relationships has to do with networking, connecting with people. You can invite anyone with an account to connect with you or accept invitation to connect with other people. That is, uh, connections can be made or saved through a menu which I'm going to show you. You click on that menu, my networks, it permits you to connect with others uh, of different careers, professions, or different backgrounds who, uh, in which you may be interested. Okay, so if you look at this image on your screen, it permits you to, if you look at the bottom of that image, if you look at the bottom of that image, you find the icons, uh, home, my network, post, notifications, and jobs. And just before you get to that point, you notice that uh, your invitations, people who invite you to be connected with them, will appear just a little below the, the, the bar of them. You find invitations. And currently, there's one invitation that is pending. You're supposed to either accept or reject. Then you can also have people whose profiles may be interesting and you may want to connect with them. So once you click on my network, it connects or it gets you to this window. Like in this case, you can click on message to send a private message to them. Uh, to them. So all of that actually helps you to create relationships. That's how LinkedIn implements relationships. And of course, there are other social media platforms which also implement uh, the relationship functionality. The next we are going to look at is the reputation functionality or the reputation block on, link, on LinkedIn. Uh, it actually requires, it's a, uh, your, your connections can write recommendations, you see, like we initially mentioned, so that uh, whoever is viewing your profile, it could be somebody or a company you're applying to work with, uh, and so they, are, they now visit your LinkedIn profile and have to check to find out how much uh, they may like to know about you. So then your recommendations written by other people could help you get that job. And your endorsements too, as well as your skills, could help you get that job. So what are recommendations? Recommendations are personal testimonials that emphasize your professional ability. So. If you look at your, 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 your profile, you'll find recommendations where it's, a, it's, a, it's an option that permits you to ask people to recommend you and whoever is visiting your site can find that. All right, through your platform, you can also apply, you know, or get to uh, be connected with people of different fields, as well as you can apply a job for a job uh, in a field that maybe you're interested in or in which you are well uh, nurtured. So you can have fields like engineering, business development, finance, and so on. So you select that. Okay, how do you build a strong reputation? Remember, we're looking at how a, a reputation is implemented on LinkedIn. How then do you build a strong reputation on LinkedIn? You are to, you see, your endorsements are simple notifications confirming that you have a particular skill. So you are to make sure that many people endorse you because that information, when seen by your employer or your prospective employer, will help you quickly get the job. So make sure that many people endorse you and that information be recorded on your profile, maybe through other jobs that you're applying for before or people you have worked with before, they could actually endorse you. So, secondly, also create engaging posts. You know, people get to know about you when you keep putting up some information which, of, of the, which is in their area of interest or some information that 
makes sense to them. So always create and upload engaging posts that gets many people to know about you or like to always visit your posts uh, in order to see what you are putting up. You can also make sure that you post, like I said, useful info, uh, informative uh, or relevant information uh, with those with whom you are connected. Now, it's very important that whatever you're putting up is relevant because if you're working, this is a, remember, LinkedIn is a professional environment. If you start posting things that are not relevant or things that uh, do not or are not interesting to whoever your connections are, you discover that many people would not like to be connected with you. So, your post, like I said, greatly contributes to your reputation. And LinkedIn allows the posting of videos, and you can use built in stickers and filters to publish, full, uh, you can as well as publish full articles uh, through a publishing platform. So, your articles that are published, the videos you upload, and maybe your stickers get to give a certain image about yourself that may help many more individuals to be interested in you or to like communicating with you. Um, your articles that you write appear on your profile too and others can see. So your reputation can help you earn a job, like I said, and it also allows you to search for people of specific skills that you need. You can create a LinkedIn page to boost your organization's profile too. Now, other things that you can do on LinkedIn include, uh, you know, you can set up joint groups to discuss ideas and share industry news, as well as you can use the search bar to look for interesting groups or networks to join. Um, you can also explore topics, like recall we said, you can explore topics in which you're interested by typing that in the address bar, but also LinkedIn displays is a number of topics in which you could be interested. So you just have to click on the topic and you'll have information about that given to you. Having gone through this lesson up to this level, it's important for us to look at some exercise which will help us find out how much we are able to retain or recall. So the first thing is for you to find out or maybe to recall what the identity functionality is and how it is used in social or what it is, what, what is meaning in social media functionality. So what is identity as used in social media functionality? The second question requires that you give other blocks of the honeycomb structure that are emphasized in LinkedIn. And the third question requires that uh, you give uh, the, the use or the purpose for the, uh, the LinkedIn platform. So if you got your answers correctly by recalling what we've seen so far, then your responses should look like this. The first question is, what is the identity functionality? Identity is the first and central block of the honeycomb structure, and it's about the extent to which Information regarding a user is part of the social media platform. Secondly, other uh, blocks that are emphasized on the, on the, on the LinkedIn uh, functional uh, honeycomb structure include the identity, relationships, and reputation functionalities. And lastly, uh, members use the LinkedIn site to keep in touch with business associates, clients, co-workers and other professionals. You will have to carry out this assignment before our next lesson. So you are to give another platform which emphasizes or builds its brand around the identity block of the social media functionality. The following uh, links and uh, documents were consulted in the course of uh, preparing for this lesson and you do well to consult them in order to get more information or to uh, that, uh, I mean, those documents will help you to better comprehend the lesson. Well, so our next lesson, we come to the end of this lesson, and our next lesson is going to be on implementing social media functionalities.